This is All India Radio in the program Insights. Now we bring you a discussion on government's new framework to curb fake and deceptive online reviews to protect consumers. The participants are Jitain Kumar Jain, cyber expert, and V. Ravi Kumar, AIR correspondent. In the last decade, there has been a steep rise in e-commerce transactions across the country. This was further accelerated during the pandemic. Currently in India, almost $70 billion annually happens on e-commerce transactions. Reviews posted online play a significant role in making purchase decisions. Consumers rely to a great extent on reviews posted on e-commerce platforms to see the opinion and experience of users who have already purchased the good or service. So the Department of Consumer Affairs and Bureau of Indian Standards have launched the framework titled Indian Standard 19,000-2022 Online Consumer Reviews, Principles and Requirements for the Collection, Moderation and Publication to Safeguard and Protect Consumer Interests. Within six, seven years while buying anything online, I just read a couple of reviews and I had a clear idea of what was a better product to buy. Now the number of reviews are excessive and also extremely polarized. Imagine you're buying a 30,000 rupees mobile online and suddenly one review says, terrible product, don't buy. It becomes very difficult to buy. So give us an overview of what these online consumer review principles entail that would make the life of a prospective customer easier. We have to understand that in last one decade, the e-commerce market has in India has been increasing exponentially. I mean, in 2018, I think it was almost $25 billion market, but by 2030, we are looking at $350 billion e-commerce market in India. And recent events and pandemic has further fueled the growth of e-commerce companies. They have made people much more habitual and comfortable to buy products, even groceries online, especially uh, the books, electronic, you know, mobile phones. Most of the gadgets which people used to go to stores and buy today, they, everybody prefers to buy online. Now, while they go on an e-commerce website and buy a product, one of the most significant factors in making a purchase decision of a customer is basically the review and feedback about that product. Now, obviously, companies write great deal about their products. They all claim their products to be best in the industry with all the features. But then e-commerce companies have always given a review, by, you know, option of users to post a review about the product. And most of the customers take critically those reviews into account while booking a hotel or buying a product or even, you know, purchasing ticket travel holiday or even buying a boarding a ticket for an airline. So now what has been noted in last five to seven years that many of these vendors on e-commerce portal or sometimes e-commerce portal themselves to sell direct products or certain companies have been indulging in the practices, unfair trade practices of getting fake reviews done for their product. We've also noticed that competitors planting fake reviews, bad reviews about the product of their competitors. So in both ways, these fake reviews significantly damage or influence the purchase decision of a customer. So Government of India in one of very bold moves where Department of Consumer Affairs and Bureau of Indian Standards, they have together jointly launched an Indian standard for verification and validation of reviews of all these online platforms. So where they will be setting guidelines, principles and processes to for these companies to assess the reviews posted on their websites so that they weed out the fake reviews and the only genuine reviews are accepted and they should be verifiable. This is in turn with a singular interest to keep the customer protection and the purchase neutrality of a customer in mind and his safety while he makes a decision to buy a product online. How would it work? Because even now there are some badges that I say verified customer on some sites and all. How does this make this more reliable? for another prospective customer buying. If we were to book a hotel a decade ago, you would probably go to a travel agency and you would be solely relying on their feedback and their choice while you book a hotel in a foreign country. Then came an era where, you know, in last five to six years, most of the hotel bookings are now done online using third-party aggregators like Booking.com, Agoda.com, or TripAdvisor, what you see every day, their advertisements on the TV and other electronic and mainstream media platforms. Now, they list all the hotels and they give you a choice that whether you want to see the list of hotels sorted by budget or by review given by the customers. And there is a default view. And that default view mostly takes into account the reviews given by hundreds of users who have visited the hotel. And it worked really well. People could find the best of these they could figure out which hotel was best, where it was located based on the reviews posted by customers. And there these hotel companies found a flaw that what if you could fake reviews? What if you could get 10,000 people to boost our reputation by posting fake reviews praising the hotel? And this became a problem because you booked a hotel based on those fake reviews and when you actually landed, you suddenly found that hotel was not that good. What did you do? I mean, there was no other option. So now
now government what they are trying to do that maybe they will bring in standards like only a person who has booked a hotel to that website and actually visit that hotel would be allowed to post a review so that you weed out all the fake reviews if only 100 people have visited a particular hotel in no case there is there would be a possibility of getting 10000 reviews only 100 reviews can come in now even in those 100 reviews those reviews have to be verifiable for example a hotel would have to collect the mobile number or email id of a person maybe his address or his true identity so that tomorrow if government wants to do an audit they would be able to reach back to that person asking them whether he actually posted a review or not or whether they someone just who impersonated them posted a review so idea is to ensure every review which is posted about a hotel product gadget or anything online is genuine and acts to give user real idea and a real view about the e-commerce portal of the products sold there and it aids in a informed decision while purchasing a product so do then you are saying there could be something like a kyc for people who are actually writing the reviews I think not the direct KYC where you'll have to probably give a lot of details about you, but there could be a primitive KYC. For example, when you book a hotel, obviously when you check in, you you give your credit card, you give your name, right? Right. You give your ID. Right. So hotel will allow you to only post a review, or maybe they can give you a review link or a review code once they have received your ID and you have actually visited the hotel. Likewise for the product. you can only be allowed to give a review once you have purchased the product and the product has been delivered to you and there is a delivery code available with you so there are a lot of ways where you can use machine learning and ai and other data analytics based decision to ensure that only fake reviews are posted on the website because see we are living in an era where hundreds of websites across the world are offering services of fake reviews now if that was to be the case how do you make a fair choice in buying a product how do you buy a genuine product so government had to step in and i think right now they have after the consultation with the industry stakeholder platforms like facebook google i think almost 11 companies are participating now in right, right. swiggy yeah. and uh, google and other companies google. so right now it is a voluntary standard where everybody can comply with their own free choice i think if that sets the cart on the right course government will be fine otherwise i think it would be made mandatory to follow the standards so would there be i mean there's also that data privacy bill that is uh, if i look at it along with this will there be any privacy concern? and for genuine consumers who have negative feedback i think one of the decision that when you validate in the process of verifying a review it takes certain information about the customer to ensure that he is a genuine customer mm-hmm. and government also wants to ensure that while you do that process to verify a customer uh, during a review you have to ensure the privacy of that customer the privacy of his data for example if somebody has posted really a bad nasty review about a hotel the hotel should not be able to find out about the address of that person and send goons so in a way you have to protect the identity of a customer right. or to a certain extent so that he can give you without fear or favor because that's a big factor right now even when we write a negative feedback we're sure there will be no recrimination there will be no backlash of course So you think that will be protected even in these things? I think let's not go very far. I think on, on social media, let's forget reviews. Even if you write a critical feedback about a company on Twitter, you're told that yeah. company ends up blocking you so yeah. that you can't tag them anymore. Yeah, that is. I true. think this is going to come to an end after these guidelines are notified. People will have a right to freely give a review and speak about their mind, and the companies will have to listen to what the standards are and not run their review standards like a personal feud dome. So I, I understand this process started in June this year, and the government has now given another 15 days to BIS. to put it in action so when does it actually become operational so is it already operational i think to, to my best of my knowledge 25th november which is tomorrow okay so from, yeah and what these are these these are voluntary standards so right. nobody is putting a, something down your throat you have enough time to comply with that you can take your own sweet time and do the take a reasonable time to implement this guideline and i think most of the reputed companies have been part of this process already like amazon google meta youtube ola swiggy so a lot of 11 you know reputed companies have been part of this process so i think they are more or less ready with what has to come in and many of the companies like amazon flipkart which are part they've already been deploying some sort of review verification process i think which has not worked to a great extent right. but they have done reasonably well i think they would improve the process and i think there are already you know a few companies in the world which are offering review verification services so i think their services could be taken and this could be complied of right so there are things like you mentioned that this is largely self regulation right now so yeah. i'm saying this is applicable uh, by 25th november tomorrow onwards so let's yeah. take a week so saying 1st december 2022 anybody writes a review which is not kosher then do you complain to somebody where do you complain how does it work so i think these companies will have to appoint a review administrator so anybody i think his duty will be actually to verify and validate the review and also he would be the first point of contact in case somebody has a problem with the review and as i mentioned apart from this big e-commerce portals like uh, flipkart and amazon 
or these companies like Zomato and Swiggy, two of the India's biggest industrialist powerhouse, which are operate multiple industries like Reliance and Tata, are also a part of this entire framework and fall into consultation. Right. So I think and Zepto is there, Misho is there, Blinkit is there, and Google is there. So Google is where most of the reviews happen. So I think most of the significant players are already on board. So we will see, I think, a very rapid standardization of this entire process. And then there are companies like uh, Verified View and all those, you know, other products which are uh, already uh, and Fake Flagger, which verify fake reviews about a product or a website online. So they are already there in the market. So I think the transition to the standard will be very less. And I think there will be a significant improvement in the trustedness of the reviews which are available online or done online. One of the concerns typically why all these things were done was basically you have false negative reviews which are written by a suppliers, competitors, which is yeah. intended to ward off consumers from the organization. So within a week or 10 days, would we expect all these fake reviews to be removed from these uh, sites or has it already been done? That's a very interesting question. Would you apply the standards from the retrospective effect? Yeah. I don't think that would work because then to figure out something what was done in the past and delete might be very, very difficult. I think we saw certain cases where people ran coordinated disinformation campaigns against companies like Baidu's. We saw thousands of people posting fake reviews, posting as fake customers about com- right. and raising complaints about reasons. And these customers never existed. So I think someone was playing mischief. So I think in future, probably once this guideline recommended or implemented and with, once the standards are notified, you will find this fake coordinated disinformation campaigns or reputation harm campaigns disappearing. That could happen. And also what would happen is that when you would go on a website like Amazon or Zomato or wherever you want to buy a product, probably you will be able to trust the ratings and reviews more than what you do today because you will know that even if the reviews are less in number, they are 100% trusted ones and verified ones. One of the concerns that I saw online is that consumers use their newfound position of a public critic and in effect they can obtain better circumstances or other benefits from a supplier that they review. Does that also get fixed in this new regulation? How does that get fixed? I think inducement to write positive or negative reviews by offering some sort of monitoring benefits will come to an end because we have like, we see at many hotels, they offer you a free sweet dish if you post a positive review on Google. It has been happening now also across right. many countries. Right. We also see that if you post a, you know, a little negative review about a product, you'll get a call from that company offering you a discount or a coupon to maybe modify or delete the review. Yeah, so, so, so I think one, one of the reasons you look at it is that a review should not be deleted for, let's say, a period of five years. Unless that happens, this is very... No, I think consultation or request has to be differentiated from induced coercion. Right. For example, if you went to a hotel, which is a really reputed hotel, and on one fine day, AC was not working in that particular room, and you post a review that hotel is very bad and all those things, and the hotel gives you a call saying that, ma'am, you have visited 10 times, it has never happened. Maybe it has happened because of some fault in the AC we were not able to fix. However, we are offering you a word free night. Mm-hmm. and you request the customer and he makes an informed choice based on it, I think it is fine. But if somebody says that just delete the review or else you'll not give you a hotel night and just delete the review or some sort of, that is wrong. Or if you lure people into posting fake reviews by, you know, offering them Swedish or, you know, asking people to for a fake review about a hotel from the people who have never even visited their hotel. I think it happened in Gurgaon where some people ran a slander campaign against a restaurant saying that a restaurant was serving three-day-old dishes and people were getting sick and mm-hmm. ill because of those dishes and the hotel had to shut down after two weeks. And I think a month later after the investigation it was figured out it was a fake campaign run by a competitor you know competing restaurant idea is to have a 360 degree honest trusted view about a particular product or a property by the genuine people who actually experience that property or a product and the other question that i had was does it apply to doctors because these days a lot of doctors consultation is also online does it include them as well I think it would, because if there's a third-party aggregators like, you know, the doctor or proctor apps and all, which are offering doctor consultations and then you give reviews of the doctor, I think that also has to come in uh, within this code, because tomorrow you might ask 100,000 people to post fake consultation reviews about a doctor praising him. So I think the best idea, again, for this app is that reviews about a doctor can only be given by the people who have actually booked a appointment with the doctor, not by anyone random who's just part of the app. Is there any protection for the suppliers? Because the suppliers, you know, we only think in terms of consumer, but suppliers are also at uh, peril sometimes. So is there any protection for suppliers? So I think this is what the government envisages, that A, either you can go to Bureau of Indian Standards and obtain some sort of certification from them that you're following the standard code of practices. But I think that standard is going to be developed now and it's going to take some time. Actually, like, go to a third-party trusted reviewer, like Fake Flagger and all, and ask them to conduct a review about your verification and review process, and then get a, some sort of audited report or a certificate from them about the reviews which are posted on their website. So, idea is to build trust. 
idea is to have an independent review mechanism of your this entire review and uh, you know feedback process right very interesting times as you said in 10 years time will almost be 0.3 trillion in e-commerce transactions in india the value and this yeah. is a great step by the government to actually protect consumers and also suppliers and giving them informed choices jitend jain thank yeah. you so much for joining all india radio thank you You were listening to a discussion on government's new framework to curb fake and deceptive online reviews to protect consumers. The participants were Jatain Kumar Jain, cyber expert, and V Ravi Kumar, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You may email your opinion about this program at airnstalks@gmail.com.